What's going on? It is Talking Baseball. We have another episode here with Trevor Ploof, Jake, and myself, and we're going to be talking about spring training. Let's do it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Talking Baseball. My name is John Boy. I'm coming to you from the Bronx, New York. I've got my co-host and best friend, Jake Story Alley. His ancestors used to tell stories in alleys. He's in Denver, Colorado. And also with us is Trevor Ploof. If you're watching the YouTube video or the live stream, appreciate you patrons who are watching the live stream. You'll notice that Trevor Ploof isn't currently on screen. He finally got his camera, his mic, and his yeah. video to work perfectly, but he had the roofers banging on his roof. Now he's back. Hello. This is, uh, he's ready. What's this, up, dude? This is, this is Podcasting 101, the perils of podcasting, Jim. I just, I just had flashbacks. Remember my window cleaner times? I mean, oh, those yeah, with, were. Am I on? Those, those were insane. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, Trevor. Trevor has joined us. We were just talking about how you were, you're, you're going through the. I said perils of podcasting. That was pretty cool. But how, how you do? That is not. Dude? It's not what I'm going through. Uh, I'm doing great. I just had to, you know, lay the law down a little bit outside, and here we go. You know, I'm ready to go. Would you rather deal with that or an 80 degree sauna of a room? Uh, this was pretty easy for me, so I'll, I'll choose that. Yeah, I just had to tell yeah. some people some stuff, you know? Yeah. Hey, don't what bang. We're trying to talk about spring training. Yeah, I just did a beautiful about? intro. People are raving about it, saying it one of the best intros I've done, and that's all. Did we do that's the all. music we already? Said, we did the music. Yeah, I, fuck. Yeah. You You're missed right. the music? Maybe on the outro, I'll get my dancing in, I guess. That's a good idea. It's a good idea. How, how's everyone doing today? Trev, how are you? I'm excellent. It's been a good day for me so far. Um, as you can see, I look a little bit more professional. On our last video, there were some people who chirped me about my mic. So I got a big boy mic, big boy headphones, and uh, it's going to be a good podcast. Jake. Jake's wearing a nice hat. I have a denim hat on. Ploof has, it looks like a denim hat, but I don't know if it's denim, but that's the hat scene and all that. Jake's rocking Vandy. I have to take my sweatshirt off, so Jake, you have to talk for a second because I got to take my sweatshirt off without knocking my AirPods out of my ear. It's like a real skilled thing you got to do. Let me check it out. See if we get some nudity on the show today. That is some good live content. Um, Trev, I, I will kick one thing to you early because I we're we're gonna have a fun episode. We're gonna talk some spring training. We'll get some yes. player stuff, some of the stuff you loved, a lot of the stuff <laughs> you hated, um, and I think that's awesome. And I do. Um, well, uh, you know me. Well, a you okay. came in hot and you wanted to go with another real serious topic, which I think we're gonna push to next week. <laughs> I um, did. But yeah, we're we're gonna have some fun spring training talk. And uh, before we get there, and I I don't want to. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to bring us bring us down too hard, but I think one of the biggest things me and Jim found out about you last trip when we really hung out with you, we went to like a family event with you, which we totally shouldn't have been at. But thank you for the invite again on that. <laughs> but uh, you are a proud Valley guy. You're a proud L.A. dude. And uh, I don't we haven't had you on the mic since the Kobe stuff. So I know it's a couple days away and I I don't know if you you want to get anything out there quick because I. Dude, like you are, you're a passionate LA guy, man. Yeah, I mean, I think most people um, around LA. I mean, we've had two days of basically kind of a little grief, a little mourning period here. Um, I think on Sunday, everyone was just in shock. Yeah, and um, you know, didn't really know how to feel. It was crazy news. I got, I was on the airplane, got a text from my wife, a couple, a couple texts from my buddies on some group chats. Ooh. And, that's a place I would not want to hear about a helicopter yeah. crash. I d- honestly I didn't even think about that. Um, I was just trying to figure out what happened. And I had, you know, all I had was uh, just like messaging. So I was like asking everyone, like, what happened? What happened? And like initial reports were him and all of his daughters were there. And, and it, I heard that and I was just like started crying on the airplane. Yeah. And um, 
then we found out, you know, what, what actually happened. And it's just definitely just a sad thing. I mean, you can see obviously his impact like all over sports with everyone who's posting on social media about it. And he's really just affected people worldwide. And he, I mean, Kobe got so much, so much shit from everyone, you know, yeah. like while he was playing, cause he, he just played that like villain kind of card. But in LA, man, he was, my buddy put it really well. He said in a town full of stars, Kobe transcended them all. Like he was bigger than anyone here. Like, I don't even care who Tom, Brad Pitt, any of the actors, like it's Kobe. In LA, it's Kobe. He walks in someplace and it's just I mean, it's he's a, he was a legend, a living legend. So it's uh it's tough, but um you know, I think a lot of good has come out of it. I think people are really uh being thankful for the time they have and the people around them. I think that's always kind of something that a good thing that comes out of tragedy like this. People start to you know, be um, grateful for what they have. Yeah. And so a way to turn uh, it into a somber podcast. Yeah, no, I, it was we, supposed to be fun and now you just made me go on. I know, up. man. And we're, we're going to get to some fun, but I, <laughs> you're, you're an LA dude and you got the mic and that's part I of appreciate it. So I, that. I, I, I wanted to give you a little of that and you are, uh, it is like the girl dad thing is pretty awesome. And I know you are one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, it sucks that something like that has to happen to, to get to some of those places and like Shaq and all that stuff. But um, yeah. yeah, let's uh, let, let's get it out there. If you want to talk to Trevor Plouffe about that, tweet at him. Um, I want to. Yeah, I have a question for you guys. The news okay. about uh, Chris Bryant getting his uh, mm. whatever I don't know the term claim or grievance uh, got denied. Is that a conversation that we save for next week's episode when we talk about the upcoming strike and the players union and stuff like that? <laughs> Cause that's another sad, not sad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my thoughts really to talk about on it. Uh, really? I mean, you knew he was going to lose because you knew he was going to, it's within the yeah, rules, yeah. what they do. So yeah, it's, you know, what are yeah. they going to do? It's stupid. If anyone doesn't up. know, yeah. If anyone's not aware, I think we talked about this when it initially happened. Cause I said, Hey, it's something to watch for. Cause if Chris Bryant wins this, and by by win I mean they filed a grievance that the Cubs intentionally held him back to manipulate his service time, they did. Uh, yeah. That that no a way. lot of players, Glaber, um, there's a bunch of others like can also file a claim, and it's within the rules. It's just the the uh, the agreement is kind of stupid. So they'll fix that, and we'll save that for the strike talk. And now we can move on to spring training. Which, as Trav will let you know, is the most fun, joyous time that he's ever had playing baseball. I got to be honest with you. I mean, spring training is an awesome time. Baseball-wise, it's stupid. And guys, I mean, it's probably two weeks too long. And it's not real baseball. But as a for a fan, I don't think there's a better time to go experience baseball than spring training. And especially in Arizona, if you make it out to Arizona, you can catch, you know, 15 teams out there. Essentially, I don't know if it's 15, but something like that. And they're all very close. And you can just go, like, to all these games, see prospects. You see starters somewhat. Um, and then you go out and you can see guys from all different teams walking around, you know, the Phoenix area. It's it's a, it's a trip, man. Like, I would recommend. I know uh, you guys are going to spring training. It's not 100% sure if I'm going or not. I'll probably crash the party, but uh, like I said, as a fan, man, there's I don't think there's a better time to watch baseball. It's just a different – it's a party atmosphere mixed with baseball. It's totally different from a fan's perspective. Uh, so Jake and I can do a whole episode on that. But we'll let you talk about from the player's perspective. Getting to spring training, is it first day of high school? Is it like all your old friends, you dress as best you can on the first day, <laughs> you get a nice haircut – take a picture on the front step and you're off to like first day of school. Is that the vibe? Yeah, that's a good analogy. You know, everyone's got their fresh gear. Uh, I think the first thing everyone does, they come in in shape. You obviously you've had the entire winter to like really do your thing. And everybody, and I mean, everybody is like, I'm in the best shape of my life. And it's like, really? How are you? Cause you know, but uh, everyone feels, you know, super saucy about themselves. They show up, uh, a big thing for, for guys need to know right away is, is my equipment there? Cause you have the, you know, your, whatever your sponsor is for your batting gloves, your cleats and all that. They, they should have like a spring training shipment for you. But a lot of the times 
for whatever reason, logistically it gets messed up and you show up and there'd be guys who have a ton of stuff and then some guys who have to wait on it. So that's always a thing. Um, Damn. Yeah. Well, you, when you had a ton of stuff and your teammate had zero stuff, would you share? See, I peg you as a guy that was nice, a sharing guy. And that's kind yeah. of another, another question in general about baseball. Like, do guys share their bats or they're like, nah, dude, I, I have 10. Don't yeah. need my damn bat. Yeah, you you share. I mean, if your guy wants your bat, it's not a big deal. I mean, the team the teams now, if you're in the big leagues, the teams pay for your bats, so you can just essentially order a zillion bats. Nice. So, but yeah, as far as the gear, yeah, like you'd help a guy out. But a lot of times, guy bar so guy borrows off. your bat. Guy borrows your bat, hits a home run with it. Are you pissed at him or happy? I'm happy for him. Okay. Yeah, yeah for damn. sure. Even if he breaks yeah. it, I don't care. What does it matter to me? I'm trying wow. to get you in yeah. a dark place. Yeah. I know you guys are trying to bring me down. I'm in such a good mood; it's not going to work today, guys. I am just I, rocking. Out. I thought I thought it was funny with the first day of high school comparison, and what yes. you said about spring training that the different mindsets. You know, some people are going into their first day of high school, and there's like a fear factor. They're like, "Yeah, uh, are people going to like me?" And so I think the baseball side of that is funny because everyone rolls into spring training like, "I'm about to have the best damn year of my life." That's um, it is the most optimistic point of the season for yeah. every single franchise. <laughs> and even even for the shitty teams. I mean, we know that the the Pirates are gonna lose a hundred games this year. But they're still gonna go into spring training and be like, you know, why not us? You know, like we could do it. Why not? We can I surprise mean, the world. Do you really think so? Do you really think so? Because I mean the pirates <laughs> Do I think I mean, they're I, gonna win? No. Well, no, but I mean, if you're if you're a player on that team, I mean, it's got to be in the back of your head. Like, you're looking around. Like, even if these dudes put together their best season, I mean, where are we gonna land? I I feel like the optimism is still there, but it's it's a more personal optimism. Does that make yeah. sense? Like, hey, I'm gonna have a big year, but this team ain't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, but I agree with that. Like, every per on a personal level, you're like, look, I'm I'm in great shape. I got my new cleats on. You know, I had the the tailor get my pants just right. Um, mm. I'm, I'm swagged out with my like all my Evo shield. You know, like you feel good about yourself. But you're also gonna have, you know, the coach come in and give his talk, and that's hilarious. Especially if you're on, like, you know, I don't. I guess I was on a few teams where we knew we weren't gonna be that good. But um, I mean, it's you go in there and it's just like they have to say it. They have to be optimistic. You know. And they kind of know it is bullshit, but um, yeah, like, it's just a fun time for baseball. I, it really is. You, you show up, the high school analogy is great because it is very similar. It's very relatable uh, to that. Yeah, well, I always kind of think of like professional baseball players never, and in, in, I don't mean this as an insult, like in, in some aspects never leave high school. Like I'd uh -huh. die. I'd kill to go on bus rides with my buddies still. Like, like oh, people that people that don't play high school sports, I think, look back at that as like the fond memories of youth sports and pro <laughs> players still rides? or plane rides. Just like traveling yeah. as like a team is cool. Jake used to wear a do rag on the bus. He would, oh he would do naked stuff sometimes. It's a good time. A lot of naked stuff. A lot of naked lot of stuff naked in Jake's stuff. past. There, I, I like that. I mean, baseball is full of nudity. I think we've covered a little yeah. bit of that already. When uh, when, when how many spring trainings have you gone to where like you're completely the new guy? Um, uh, two, two. Is it or, like is that? Do, do they make an effort to welcome you, or is it you're on your own? Like if you're a shy player, can you just get lost in the mix for a while there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many guys. I think you know most teams bring like 50 guys, maybe 40 to 50 guys. So my first time I was new was when I got signed as a free agent to Oakland. But I knew guys, you know, I knew, you know, Vote and somebody else, a couple other guys. So I went in there, you know, not totally blind, but you definitely have to like go in and I don't know if, was, if anybody's ever gone to a new school for the first time. It's very similar to that. It's like people see you, they don't really know you. So you have to like, I, w I like went out of my way and just like went and talked to every, talked to every single person because that's kind of that's how you I are. do. That's yeah, how I so am. Yeah. So it's, it, yeah. it's easy for me, but I can see how a lot of people will be like terrified. Jake, we, so for the listeners, we don't have a structure here. Jake and I just rapid fire wrote down a ton of questions. So I have one, Jake, unless you want to go. No, you could go. Let's uh, 
Let's rip them. Because, yeah, I mean, the, the only yeah. other, like, broad stroke thing I had was just the difference between being the young guy and being the old guy. Because uh, I think you you hinted you – know, we, we talked about it a little bit that, you know, when – when you were on the twins and you were raking a little bit, that spring training was a joke. Like, I think you knew <laughs> you, you had third base, like you were chiller. Um, and that was it. Uh, when you were a young guy, was it, were you in like hardo mode or was it, you know, you kind of had your path laid out like, yeah, you're going to put in your time at the minors. And when it's time it's check in or I, I mean, what was the different mindset? And then at the back end of that, when you're at the latter part of your career and is, I don't know. Does that hardo mode kick in again, or, or what? I, I'm just trying to get into your mental headspace a little bit. Well, always, always, baby. Uh, it's just so different. There's definitely different experiences in spring training. <clears throat> when you're young, I mean, you try to get there first. You try to get there super early. You try to get your work in so everyone can see it. That's like a big thing. If you're young and you're trying to make an impression, like. It ain't about working behind closed doors. It's like, let me, let me, let me put my workout on blast here. I got to make sure everybody's watching me. Um, but I mean, there's a, it's not all fake. You know, you're going in there trying to make an impression. So you have to show that you work hard because if guys, if you don't have that reputation or nobody knows your reputation, you have to like make one for yourself. You know, you have to make your own reputation. And then, yeah, as you get a little older, a little bit more secure, that's when spring training becomes a lot of fun because essentially the first two weeks of spring training, you know, even when the games start, it's like, it's like a vacation. I mean, you go there, you get a workout in, you run, get some ground balls, you run through some PFPs and then you're done and it's 12 o'clock and you can go <laughs> fishing and you can go like do whatever you want to do. And it's, it's really nice. Those first, those first couple of weeks. You, you mentioned get like how players get there in shape. Do you ever have you ever seen like old footage of like 1950s spring training? They wouldn't get there in shape. <laughs> yeah. They would get there as out of shape as however they were, and then they'd use spring training to get in shape. So like they mm. like you know they really used it how it some was guys meant still to do be that. used. Some, <laughs> some guys, guys still, still yeah. do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, that's. <laughs> I, I feel like, I feel there's got to be a lot of dudes that leave a little bit little round mound to rebound going on and they're like yeah i mean the first couple weeks we're just going to be running and shit right um yeah usually it's pitchers that come in like that yeah because i guess they can i don't know yeah because they you know it's funny like you know a pitcher he can only throw the ball so many damn times you know yeah so their day their days there are so ridiculous like a pitch a, (laughs) a pitcher in spring training has the best life dude i mean if you pitch one day like you're gonna get two days off probably so like the only thing you really have to do in those two days is like show up like do some arm care maintenance maybe get a workout in and then that's it dude like if you have the game yeah you get a massage you hit the sauna up you know whatever some i'm jealous of all the massages pictures are ridiculous you like imagine phil hughes in spring training like you can just imagine (laughs) what you'd be doing you know what i mean sorry phil going going (laughs) going through cards no, he wasn't. He wasn't at that level. He might have been playing like Pokemon Go or something like that. But yeah, Phil's cleaning up with his cards, man. He's taking off. He's Holes, doing man. Do you see Phil's his recent Holes. idea? He doesn't do like nonstop breaks that he hosts. <laughs> like Phil, I don't man. know. Yeah, hey. you got a baby, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Good for I, I, him. Yeah. Keep telling him. I got to start pulling on myself. Um, Trev, the one, the one other thing before we get into some of the, some of the quick fire, silly stuff, were you ever in like a straight up position battle? Dude, I'm so happy you brought that up. Okay. This is, this is the formatting that we needed because, um, I wanted to talk about position, spring training position battles. They are almost completely made up. Really? Like the media makes spring training battles. When you go into spring training, that roster is pretty much set. I mean, somebody, maybe like a back end of the bullpen thing, if a guy just, you know, has a horrible spring training and looks really bad, like maybe they can flip-flop on someone like that. But essentially you go into spring training and your job is, you know, it's it's you either have it or you don't already. Especially nowadays, like they don't, they already have their projections for you. So they, I mean, they don't even... They don't even care about spring training games. It doesn't mean anything. They already have your, you know, whatever it's called, your steamer projections. And uh, you go in there and they know exactly who they want on that damn team. I mean, I've been told, 
I don't know, three or four times in my, how many spring trainings did I go to? Like 15, three or four times, uh, I was in, actually like in a, a battle and there was no battle whatsoever. I mean, they it didn't you matter. Just one, just all you No, Sometimes I would lose and have no shot. Like my last couple of spring trains, I went with Texas. I was supposed to like battle for like a utility role, play second base, do all this shit. And I didn't do any of that. I had no chance. Uh, and it was like, yeah, I was, you know, your insurance in case somebody gets hurt. So that's a big overblown thing. Like, I don't know what the Yanks, I'm sure you guys are very tuned in to like the Yankee spring training position player battles, but they're already over. So we've, we've kind of developed our own battle <laughs> that, okay. that we say is happening, but the rest of the media hasn't, hasn't talked about it yet. Okay. So. Who's what's the battle? I want to know. Talk uh, Talkman versus Anduhar uh, as if Anduhar will be the DH then he will be the starting DH and Stanton will be in left field or Talkman has the better bat, put Stanton as DH and Talkman in left field. Okay. <laughs> Two in the weeds. You're like, I well, I I mean, is that like, they're all going to be on the roster, right? So they don't really have to make a decision. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, just about, about where they're going to be. I guess I could yeah. see that having some kind of merit, but like they always say like spring training numbers. I mean, what are they, how can you make them mean anything? So have Speed you ever of. seen have you ever seen one good spring training battle? Like it was straight left field, one of you's gonna get it or no. Or because you're right. I mean, spring training doesn't matter. Me and Jimmy find ourselves in this speech. I'd say coming up, we're gonna have to tell ourselves this about twice a week. Because you're like, <laughs> And then wow. we'll we'll fall we'll fall in love with guys and then I know we'll be you like, will. wait, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Last year the Yankees, Yankees had, last year the yeah. Yankees had a good one with Voight and Bird, and they both hit like seven homers each or ten homers each in spring. They were yeah. going like tit for tat. They both made the roster, and then Bird got hurt. But, like, that was a good one. Yeah. I can see for playing time, initially, maybe they could, there's be, there'll be a separator. But still, like, I mean, I've seen guys have unbelievable spring trainings and just, like, it doesn't mean anything. Like, you're going to get sent down to AAA. Yeah. You know, you just mopped up. And, you know, you feel pretty you feel pretty good about yourself when you're raking in spring training. But then you quickly realize it just doesn't mean anything. How many spring you training know? home runs do you think you have to your name? Oh. I don't know. I don't think I have that many. I don't know. Maybe like 10, maybe more. I don't oh, know. 10 on the nose. Bloof. Ooh. Oh, you looked it up, really? Oh, I got it. Yeah, what do you think your best spring training year was? Probably one of the ones I was paid because <laughs> I didn't care. <laughs> uh, 2016. Yep, there it was. Yeah, one <laughs> dot <laughs> zero nine four OPS. Good job, man. Uh, oh, that's what, I mean, that was a spring training where I played, you know, I got two at bats and I was I was done and I didn't have to go on road games and that was when I was getting treated like a king. No wonder I played well. Good you job. Know? Yeah, also 2013 pretty good too. 2009 tough times. That might have been my first spring training, so Looks like you got two at bats in 06 and two at bats in 2008. So that that leads us yeah. those two at bats in 06 and 08 a position probably came from a position that we were talking about in Texas. The Yankees have these guys for the last, like, three seasons. Uh-huh. The seventh, eighth, ninth inning of spring training games, Trey Ambergi comes in. Uh-huh. And, Matt Lipka. <laughs> and, like, you know, and Glaber Torres or, or Tyro Estrada have already been sent down to AAA camp or minor yeah, league a, camp because yep. they want them to get a lot of at-bats. So it seems to me like being cleanup duty – the seventh, eighth, yeah. ninth inning of spring training for the big league club kind of means they're not invested in you at all and kind of shitty. But yeah, if well, you're that player, are you happy or are you like, this sucks? It depends. I mean, if you're like actually in big league camp and you're like sticking around. So what happens is the guys that are on the 40 man roster, there's a cutoff date. And if they get hurt past that cutoff date, then they are they'll get big league service time and you have, and you get big league pay and all that stuff. So before that date comes, all the guys that they know aren't making the team, that's they get sent down. And they'll keep the non-roster invites longer. So if you're like one of those guys and you're and you're sticking around because you're on the you're not on the roster, it's great for you because you're still making your per diem and whatever your spring training money. But if you're one of the guys that's like on minor league camp and they come over and they bring you over for the day. It's horrible. It's cool. Cause you're getting a shot to like play in the big leagues, but you're wearing number 98. 
you probably have a double ear flap helmet when everybody else has a single mm. ear flap helmet. Loser alert. Oh, it's the worst. And Just be wearing um, like a straw hat when everyone else has got denim hats on. Yeah, like an, looking like an idiot. Yeah. So I, I love I'm gonna start <sighs> insulting so many people by calling them a double ear flap. It's the yeah, worst. we we already did that's that a, it's a, on it's tough, yeah. 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 Damn. That means that means you're just you're not show. You're like a yeah. scrub. So yeah. Jake, um, what did we say? We said double ear flap guys were also blank. And we were mm. definitely using it as an insult. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh sh- we Lowry. said sh- shower with their boxers on. <laughs> those are the double ear flap guys <laughs> kind of i could see that i get that i like it it's it's double ear flaps worse i'd rather shower with my boxers on and wear a single ear flap helmet for sure wow <laughs> but uh, so i mean you know we talk about how guys feel in spring out. training there you go yeah so how guys feel like in spring training and if you're a guy you show up you do your thing you play the first four innings and you peace out if you're not a guy, you're sitting on the bench the first five or six innings. You go into the game. The fields are in horrible condition. They might as, you might as well be fielding a ground ball on asphalt. So you have to like watch out for that. Then you're also facing really young guys at the end of the game. Most young guys who are in big league camp, they throw the ball really hard and they have no idea where it's going. So it's essentially you're just kind of like battling like battling your way to the end of the game. And when the end of the game comes, you're so happy. So, so happy. So it's just, there. there's, there's def, definitely different scenarios for guys. And that's a, another reason why they don't care that much about spring training numbers is because who are you doing it against? Like, are you doing it against like, a, after the sixth inning, you're doing it against an A-ball guy. So who cares? Well, and we, we always laugh because there will be days like early on in spring training the pitcher will only throw a fastball and there yeah. you'll, we'll see people be like, Oh man, Sevy got knocked around today. And it's like, uh-huh. yeah, cause he threw 22 pitches and 21 of them were fastball. <laughs> like, um, and I, I, it's just ridiculous when you actually, you know, and we'll be saying this so I many know. times. I'm going to keep reminding weeks. you guys that like, cause I know you start to lead up to spring training, get the storylines in the head and you're like, Oh, this is a big deal. Like, Look what he just did in this game. And I'm going to just be like chirping. Remember yeah, what was. we talked about January Two years 29th. ago, Stan's first spring training with the Yankees, he, I mean, he has an inverted batting stance, but it was the most inverted batting stance I've ever <laughs> seen in my life at spring training. He basically, like, he was lining up in the box as if the right field foul pole was the pitcher. Yeah, and, I remember that. And he was letting balls travel as deep as they can and just fouling them off. And Vado said that that's what he tries to do his first couple games in spring training. Just let the ball get as deep mm-hmm. as possible and foul it off. And that's literally the only goal. Yes. And then, like, it happens. people like people start screaming about, <laughs> you know, how bad he looks and all he this. Looks so and, bad. and and uh, Jake and I are also like, he does look bad. It doesn't matter, but it looks bad. And we're like having our internal struggle with that. <laughs> Did you ever go into spring and, and just try something completely new? Last year, Aaron Judge all spring didn't have his leg kick. He, he he kept both feet planted on the ground, just shifted his weight, didn't pick his front leg up at all, and he was hitting great. Tons of doubles, not as many home runs. Season starts, instantly back to leg kick. Leg yeah. kick. So did, do guys, like, is that just fucking around or why not? Or are they really like, because do you guys make adjustments? Is that boredom or is that really trying something new? It's just trying to get like a feeling. So he's probably like, I want to let the ball, I want to see the ball as long as I can. Um, and you'll see that all the time. I remember one day Yachty was, he was like hurt, like something with his legs or something. So he like couldn't run, but he wanted to track pitches. So he was, he de-aged and he took every single pitch. Like it didn't matter. Like he was, he was going to take every single pitch, but he just wanted to get like game speed. So like he'd go up there and like, we knew that. Like, they told us, like, hey, like, he's not running, yeah. like, whatever, whatever. And these pitchers, man, these <laughs> fucking pitchers still, like, couldn't throw strikes. I'm like, dude, this guy is fucking taking right now, guys. It's like, lay one in there. Let's go. But uh, it's funny. Yeah, you'll see guys do that, all, like, stuff like that all the time where it's like they're either working on something in the cage and you can only do so much in the cage. They want to take it out in the game and see how it feels. And that's the perfect time. That's why spring training numbers are so stupid. 
They're so stupid. There, there's a one of our one of our favorite beat writers for the Yankees, Brian Hoke. Sometimes mm-hmm. he posts his emails from readers, and they're like looking at the Yankees win and loss record in the spring training. <laughs> in spring training, and saying like, "What the fuck is Boone doing? They're losing." It's crazy. One time, I I, I, I met Cashman at a spring training game against Boston. And I just said hi to him, like, hey, Cash, what's going on? And he said to me, uh, hopefully we can make a comeback and win this game. And I was too shy then. I think I have a, yeah. a tad much more rapport, but I want to be like, Cash, you nor I fucking care about that. <laughs> like, yeah, no that's incredible. <laughs> cares who wins this game? Don't treat me like I'm a dummy. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's, 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 it's such a – that's why I think, as I, I was saying that before, like, as a fan, it's such a cool time to go – to the games like you get to see so many different players um and like it's like bright and sunny out you can drink beer like i guess you can do that at any other um, baseball game it's too, a but small it seems, it's a small it's a minor league field it's small it's intimate yeah. what like i do the game really doesn't matter it doesn't More matter a, it's exhibition what i do want to talk about a little bit and i just thought about this okay can we give am i i can give betting advice right is that weird? Yeah. Betting advice? Yeah. Yeah. We're we're in that age now, right? Yeah. So my theory that I've thought cuz we ta- started talking about like doing a spring training episode a few days ago and my theory is and I we'd have to go maybe check this. Like someone fact check this whoever if you guys want to do that, but if I was betting spring training games, which you can, I would bet home teams every single time because okay. home games you're actually having your good players play and then on the road trips you just kind of have a couple of good players and then a couple scrubs going so you're definitely going to get your more complete team at home one of them wow. is one of them going to be taking pitches and not even swinging the fucking bat maybe but just going by roster construction, and if you want to try to like get an edge, I would just bet home teams, especially on like long road trips. So like if a team say, okay, in Florida, Yankees, Yankees are at home and they're playing against the Cardinals. The Cardinals had to take a three-hour trip over. They're not sending anybody. They're sending in a bunch yeah. of scrubs, and I would take the Yankees. So all right, uh, good to get tip, a little tip right there, free money. Free money from Trevor Plouffe today. Only gamble um, what you can lose and be responsible. <laughs> good, mm, have fun. Good, <laughs> good save. Speaking. Um, Tre- I, what you got, Jim? Of road yeah. games. When okay. you're at your heyday in spring training, like you have guaranteed money, you're, you got the starting job. You say, you mentioned like you didn't go to road games. Can you just be like, nah, not going? Because Mariano Rivera for the yeah. Yankees, he didn't even, they didn't even give him an away uniform. That's yeah. Right. That's and that's like, like a that's like a joke like that everyone all the big dogs will say like gray pants I don't got no fucking gray pants in my locker at spring training you know they don't I don't think Joe that's Mauer a, ever went on that's a, a flex it's a flex yeah I don't that's think Joe cool. Mauer went on a road trip you know for like five or six years that I saw and right, and rightfully cool. so you earn that yeah so you call, can we call the rookies like gray pants squad like gray pants the gray What's pants up, Greg? losers, the road yeah. warrior, gray pants squad, double ear flap scrubs, yeah, gray, yeah. gray haired losers. What um, what <laughs> Excuse me. what are some what are some of the fun checkpoints? Because again, like this is this is what our third spring training gym, um, so we're we're getting up there, um, but it's funny some of the stuff that's linked, but it's not linked at all. Like St. Patrick's Day, yeah. March Madness. Um, I remember, I think it might have been last year. Where me and me and Jimmy, we we had that hunger in our belly, and we we're like, we got to corner a couple of the players accidentally. Like, if we see the guys are watching March Madness games at a bar in Tampa, we might have to also be at that bar in Tampa. Yes. Um, yes. What um I I guess uh, along those lines, like were were there some I don't, I don't want to say dope parties or something like that, but were you <laughs> no, were you always look, were you always looking forward to St. Patrick's <laughs> Day or like some... one of that first weekends of March Madness and. <laughs> Someone was going to have the the nice house that you were going to roll through, or what? What were those kind of check marks like? Where are all the dope, nasty, the, ill parties? The, 
Oh my goodness. The dope ill parties. Um you know, St. Patty's Day is obviously smack dab in the middle of spring training, so it's always a good time. If you're in Arizona, you're gonna see guys, you know, wherever the big event is, there's gonna be a ton of baseball players there. So that's a little another little tip for you. Um, I think March Madness is probably the, the funnest thing because you'll, you know, you're gonna have your team sick, you know, draw out of a hat. You do your brackets, and it's funny because it'll they'll come read like Rule Twenty One, I think it is, and that's like the rule, like don't bet on baseball, or like don't you know don't bet or anything. And then like obviously there's like a huge like bracket printed out that's like five foot long in every single clubhouse. So they're just like blatantly showing this uh, or tell or, or speaking this rule while you're illegally gambling in the clubhouse. Jake lost us. He left. Oh, he gone? He ditched. Oh, this we'll is back. Oh, finally. It's a better it's podcast us. now. Yeah. It's finally us. Why is uh, Arizona so much better than – why is the – what's it called out there? It's not the it's a, Grapefruit it's Leagues the in Cactus Florida. Cactus League. Why is the Cactus League so much better? Is it just proximity? Like yeah. you were saying, the Cactus League, all the teams hang out together. Like if you and Braun are both over there, you can be like, oh, let's hang out. Yeah. Or Grapefruit League. It's kind of in bunches. Like we're learning that because we're doing this road trip coming up. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like there's two teams, two teams, two teams, two teams. So when you finally got to the Cactus League where you're like, oh, or where do the Twins go? Better They're question. in Fort Myers. They're in Fort Myers. Yes. There, there's there's uh, pros and cons. So like everyone would always tell me, oh, do you can't. Just wait till you get to the Cactus League. It's so much better. <clears throat> and the good part about it is that everyone's kind of there. You're in Phoenix. You're in Scottsdale. So if you want to hang out with your boys, like there's, you know, you just kind of meet up at a central location and it's all good. But one thing that I loved about the Grapefruit League is if you were not traveling on a day, like a, a road game, you would you would be out of the field by like, 10 o'clock because in the great this is going to be kind of confusing for people i'm gonna try to break okay. it down here okay let's, let's, let's try to follow along in. here so in arizona no matter if you're at home or away you're taking batting practice and you're doing all your shit at your field so every day you're going through all that in florida if your team is on the road they bus early in the morning and go do all that stuff at the visiting park. So if you're staying home and you don't have to travel, there's, especially towards the end of spring training, there's probably only like five or six guys that stay back, you know, besides pitchers. And your day is just like, take some ground balls, hit in the cage, get out of here. So you, you're ended up, you end up leaving like at 10 o'clock and it's, it's a, a nice little, it's a nice little caveat of spring training that I think people kind of forget about, especially players when they're like, you know, they think that Arizona has all the advantages. I think that's an advantage for, for the Grapefruit League. All right. A little that makes fact. any sense. I yeah, don't <laughs> because the teams have to travel so far, if you don't have to yeah. travel, you have the whole day to yourself. Basically. Whole damn day, yeah. And In Florida, man, it's like you just go fishing at the, you know, the place you live. There's all, all the ponds and shit. It's great. A lot of people, we've talked about how much spring training stats don't matter at all, right? Yes. Uh, and, like, people are trying different things, and there's all these reasons why they don't matter. Is there anything to this point, because I know that you agree, and you think mental headspace and confidence plays a huge role. So that yeah. last week of spring training, can that play an effect into rolling into, like, the first week of the season? Like, if is that something fans can watch for and be like, Notice how their last five games look, because that may actually play into the into the first week. Not for like making or getting cut or making the team, but if you like, you know, if I know a guy's on the team, like, oh, he's yeah. been hot. That can carry over, right? I think so. I think you know that feeling in the box when you feel you know locked in. Like you want to try to hold on to that. If if you do that at the end of spring training, the only thing is, it's just so different, man. I mean, spring training, you're so relaxed. You know, the numbers don't matter. So you could be feeling good in spring training, and all of a sudden those bright lights turn on and the season starts and that shit starts to count. It's just kind of like a whole different mentality. But, I mean, obviously, if you had to choose, 
I mean, I don't know. I've heard a lot of guys say they they never want to get hits in spring training because they don't want to waste them. I think that's stupid. Like, I want to get hits. Oh, all I'm the time. I'm so firmly on that page. I would so. <laughs> I want to get hits all the time, no matter what. So I would so mental midget that. Like, if I had a terrible <laughs> spring training, I'd be like, well, thank God that's out of the way. Time to rake in the season. If I had yeah. a great spring training. I mean, I'd be telling myself, like, let's go. But if I had an offer that first day, <laughs> I would be gone. I'd be like, I wasted it against I Nova. wasted it, yeah. Luckily, I did that not in, a huge issue for me. <laughs> I did that in 2017 <laughs> with the A's. I had, I just, like, I hit everything, man. I hit everything. Yeah. I was raking, and then I was so shitty with the A's. I'm so sorry, A's fans. I was such a bad player. <laughs> yeah, but check out these... Check out these That's spring the training numbers. The whole reason we've done this is to get an apology <laughs> from you to the A's fans. They had high hopes. That spring, though, 370 average, 420 yeah. on base percentage. Damn, 652 slugging, two homers, two tri two triples, ploof. Yeah, who, the, who the hell knows, man? I, I think I even hit a homer against Andrew Miller. Ooh. And just like, I don't even. I remember like going back in the dugout and Bob Melvin was like, how the hell did you just do that? And I was like, I don't know. No clue, Bob. <laughs> don't don't count on it this season, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> when when so when you're when you're through that spring training, kind of the very opposite of what I just asked about the last week mattering. When do you get to the point where like fuck this? Let's just get to the season. Oh my god! Like gosh. two weeks in, one week in. Yeah, like as soon as you go through a few games and you're um, and you kind of like feel like you're baseball ready, you're just done. Like spring training sucks. After that, you're ready to start the season. You know, I don't know a lot of guys who a lot of guys like have a set number of bats that they want to get. Uh, but once you get to that point, is that you just an arbitrary in. number? I think guys, as you get older, you kind of know what your number is, and the you'll you know all the your manager will come and like kind of ask you like, oh, what do you need? Like some guys want as many of bats as possible, so they'll what they'll do. I think this is kind of cool. This is very show right here. I love talking about show stuff. Mm, you know, okay. Same. so like some flexy stuff. So guys who want more at bats, they'll go, they won't travel still, but they'll go to like the backfield games, like the minor league games. And you'll just hit like third every inning. So, so you go back is that, there. Is that a big dick move or does that it's suck a huge, for everyone? It's a big dick move and it's awesome. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like, I mean, I think everyone's probably seen the video of, like, Donaldson, like, playing a backfield game, and he hits a home run, and then, like, didn't even run. walks back to the dugout. That's exactly what you can do. Yeah. <laughs> I have a funny good. story, actually. This is me flexing right now. Big, big time spring training player right here. Um, oh, hell yeah. I was coming off a hammy injury, and this was in spring training. I was playing on the backfield, like, just getting my bats in and stuff, and the, all the guys are there, like Garden Hire's there, all the front office. They're like up in the tower watching the game because it's like early in the day, so they don't really have anything to do but watch these games. So he want, he's like, you know, make sure you're aggressive on the base pass today. Like I want to see you run. I want to make sure you're right. I went and I hit three home runs. I had three Ooh. bats. I hit three home runs. I just jogged the entire time. So I had to fucking, after that, I had to like go in the outfield and run sprints in the outfield. <laughs> Because I just worst. jogged the entire time. But it was definitely like a flex day for me. I felt like I ruined some dreams. Like oh, you go wow. down there as a big leaguer oh. and you just like you crush some homers. That's like a really that's a really fun time. <laughs> wow. Damn. March first, Ploof goes deep in spring training. I got it. You what what are you talking about right now? Fucking you internet, taking man. Miller deep. Oh yeah. Bomb, you got it. bomb the left field. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, that was a pretty Oh dude, you hit a camera guy in the nuts. Yeah, I remember oh. that. He was like laying down. Yeah, he's laying. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys laying down like paint me like one of your French girls taking photos. <laughs> Blue's ball comes and just bounces right into his legs. And then there's a mad dash of four adult men that will probably sell it for profit. Uh, yeah, afterwards. I don't know. <laughs> well, what was your what was your living plan? Um, and I think that probably changes young guy and old guy, um, mm -hmm. and maybe like. Once you get married and stuff, I have no idea. Was it? What does that mean? Like what, what, what do you mean? Like Did you get once, an apartment, Airbnb, oh, oh, yeah, roommates. Like, yeah. Like once you got that bag, you just rented a house and gave everyone the bird, or were you still trying to have roommates? <laughs> when, when did the roommates stop? Well, when I was young, I had uh, Delman Young and I would share a place, and he was 
you know, b- big baller. So I would just live with him and we, oh, him nice. and I would have a place together. It was really nice. And a lot of guys don't have someone like that. Like he took care of me for sure. But yeah, I, I mean, he's just prospect three years in a row. Yeah. He's a stud, man. He's, st- he's still doing it. He still hits homers right now. Like probably hitting one right now in Australia. He's playing in that <laughs> league. And he'll, that. he'll, se- he'll send me his videos of his homers with a, a purple eggplant emoji. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good yeah. so yeah but i mean you just kind of honestly it's, it's it's a really it's really tough to find um living in spring training i mean as you guys are probably you guys are doing the rv so you haven't really found like hotels and stuff but it's a pain in the ass dude like everyone kind of knows that's the time they could hike up their rent so like you end up paying like right. a ridiculous amount for like kind of a crappy property but um a lot i mean i always Wanted the place that a barbecue, like spring train to me, like I, I equate those two things together, like spring training barbecues. That's just like what you do. So, um, yeah, I don't really have anything. It's a good time. It's a really good time, man. And then you get sick of it because it's like early mornings, you know, like you're there at, you're there. I mean, this it's changing now a little bit as they figure out like that sleep is actually important. And it used to be like, mm. you better be working every, you know, second of every day or else you're a slouch now they're like here here guys there's a a nap room for you go in your nap room it's like yeah i've i played the game a little too early man i'd be good with a nap room right now sleep is for cowards that's what they would say stupid stuff like that water is for cowards remember the titans everyone just you know (laughs) oh man yeah i mean that's the living thing i don't really have any cool things to tell you i mean you just kind of find your place and go young guys obviously shack up together but then uh, you know, as you get older, you try to have your own place. The uh, the Yankees always bring in like you know some sort of magician or guest speaker or something like that to do a team morale thing. And this kind of is a bigger question. Maybe we've asked you. Maybe we haven't. Joe okay. Madden is famous for bringing penguins and magicians into the clubhouse. I, as a player, would absolutely hate it. I don't <laughs> like magicians. I don't like penguins. I don't like that <laughs> stupid circus stuff. Jake. Kind of think some of it's cool. I think the the dress up days are cool. What what's yeah. what's your what's your view on that? Like, if you have a manager like that, who's like, hey, we, we got to loosen up the clubhouse. Who's a penguin? They're just trying to like they have to schedule all this shit in spring training. So they're just like wasting time essentially. You know, every once yeah. in a while we get like the motivational speakers and like some of them are cool. Like I met Brian Dawkins. Like he that was cool to see. You know, with the Phillies. You know, he was just like motivating us and. I like that. What, what year did that happen? Did it work? That was no, no. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm out of baseball now. It was this year. This last year. Jim. <laughs> Jim, come on, bro. So he didn't hype me up enough, but um, yeah, all that stuff's just a waste of time, man. I'm telling you, it's such a relaxed time. Spring is. Um, so I have some fun. Like you know, as we're talking about a lot now, I have some fond memories in spring, but then also like a lot of the time, you're just like, get this shit over with. Like let's Wait, get to the sun- season. Suck for you. Go to Minnesota. Like that temperature change. Is it like? That's, well, why did we good practice? In the, why did we practice in the warmth for so long, and then we come it's, and it's thirty degrees and snowing in Minnesota? It's so stupid. And they can. I feel like they could figure it out where you would just kind of play the first month, like in the south or like on the west coast. Like there's enough people have done the data on it. There's a there's enough warm weather places that you can yeah. take the first week, like at least get halfway through March or halfway through April, take the first two weeks and you could do it. It would just suck. Cause like you don't get a home game if you're the a twins yeah, fan for a yeah. long time. I think and people are right. okay with it, dude. Like as a fan, are you like New York's freezing too? Like, are you like stoked to like be sitting out there? I get like you're getting baseball again. So that's fun. But I, I don't know for uh, like last year's Red Sox, they started out with a West Coast trip. That's awesome. Which, I mean, they were in good weather, but also you're starting like their first eleven games on the road, and I think they got beat up pretty good. Like I think the Mariners knocked them around a little <laughs> bit. Um, Mariners were I don't hot know, for two. Mariners weeks. were hot. Like they oh were hot. But I, I'm just picturing myself on the fan. If if my team had to start with a 12 game road trip every year, like I would find a way to complain about that. You seem like you'd complain about a lot of things, but oh, all right. You want to, I, <laughs> I do, I do get that. You know, speaking on like on that, like if you do start off with a, you know, uh, say you start off with two series back to back on the road, you're going to end up doing three opening day ceremonies, which is 
that's <laughs> yeah, that's the that worst part sucks. you got to be out the, it's freezing you got to be out like on the on the foul line you know the first baseline third baseline and just like stand there while like people throw their first pitch and they introduce everybody and it's like man all that stuff is cool for the first time you do it then after that it's like this is ridiculous like can we please play you said like yankees fans like the Yankees open up on the road this year, and I'm kind of bullshit about it. Like, fuck that. We got to play somewhere else before we play at Yankee Stadium. Give me Yankee Is it where, where are they opening up at? Baltimore. You know? That's actually or, a fun one. I like. Yeah, I like. That, it's my favorite ballpark. But yeah, is there, they do like a lot of pyrotechnics there. It's pretty cool. Fact check, Jake. Red oh. Sox went three and eight in their first eleven games, and they lost every series. The Seattle, Oakland, and Arizona. So, Jake, correct. Good job. Defending go. champs, man. They were pissed, and, like, I kind of got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's in, I wonder if they saw that road trip and, like, cool. You know, like, we'll avoid some bad weather, and then they just got their ass kicked. You know, um, the people that do the ticket tickets and, like, stadium shit at Fenway are the same people that do it at Fenway, spring training, and, like, they yeah. go through a spring training. They do a lot of that. They do a lot of that where they'll work both. It's pretty cool. It's pretty funny. They like send these ticket. That's a great rippers. part, dude. I don't know if you guys have been there or not. The Fenway. Of Fenway the went, yeah, we went there. We went there last year, and we actually kind of like liked it because they do like a little festival of tents and food trucks and yeah. stuff. Yankees don't oh, do that. Yeah, that was awesome. Fort Myers is kind of a cool. That that's a if someone's looking to go to spring training for the first time in Florida, I would say Fort Myers is a really good jump off point because. You're only an hour from Tampa. You have Port Charlotte that's like 35 minutes away. And then in Fort Myers itself, you have two two teams. You have the Twins and the Red Sox. Both facilities are great. And the infrastructure is pretty good there. Like there's restaurants and, and stuff like that. So. What would you rather what would you rather have? Would you rather have good fishing, good restaurants? Like what's what's the what's the Trevor Ploof dream spring training checklist? Gosh, man. Two weeks I, long. Yeah, the 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 Florida has that as well. Like you know, because most places you're staying are like it's like a golf neighborhood, you know. Right. So there's like ponds everywhere, and there's bass, and you just like literally walk outside your door and go fishing for bass. I mean, it's like I love that. I grew up fishing, and so that was. I mean, most most baseball players in Florida, that's what they're doing on their off time. They're just like getting their pole, they go out and fishing, whatever. Um, but I think now. Old old head Trev here enjoys like a, a nice culinary scene more than anything. Okay. So I don't know what Any that means. Any town jump out? Uh, Tampa's pretty good. I mean, because that's like a real city. Which yeah. place had the worst facilities? <sighs> you cannot that, answer if you don't want to. No, I don't care. Oh my gosh. Uh, Dunedin, the Blue Jays is horrible. I think they're redoing some of it now. Dunedin. Dunedin. It's horrible. In. Um, that's bad. I mean, most most places are pretty bad. Like the pirate spring training, like the field is it's like it looks like it's okay, but like the clubhouse is basically like in a shed. It's like Were it's you pretty great. picky about the ground screw? Where you're like, you guys did a shitty job today. I'm getting tons of bad hops. You just you just cost me an error. You go into the ground screw room and just <laughs> kind of tear the guy apart. Luckily, the the majority of the time, the f- the fields that I played on were good. Like Fort Myers, the Twins field is like notoriously known for being one of the best, and our, the surface in Minnesota is also really good. But yeah, I mean, there's some shitty surfaces out there still. So, like Wrigley and uh, or not Wrigley, excuse me. What's the other one? Comiskey. Fenway. What do they call it? Comiskey. Comiskey. It's got a new name. Guaranteed now, rate or something like that. Guaranteed rate. It's it used terrible. to be U.S. Cellular or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, U.S. Cellular. That's what it's called. Yeah. yeah what a what a horrible horrible infield. <laughs> and I don't mind saying. Yeah. It. And the saying or like the 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 story there is that the ground screw head ground screw guy owns Turfus or like a company like that. Do you guys know what Turfus is? No. Mm-hmm. It's like the top layer that. It's like the top layer that they'll throw like on the top, so like it's easier to slide. It kind of like dries things up. It's like okay. these little pebbles. It's called turfus, and he oh, is, like, like like the high school field type shit. I don't know, but he owned that. Um, <laughs> he owned that company, and he would just pour obnoxious amounts of turfus onto the <laughs> infield. And I could only—I swear—I was like, 
you got to just be like doing it so your company is like doing better. I don't know. Like it wow. seemed outrageous to me. And it's just a horrible infield, like a horrible infield. Damn. Have you mixed Jake, it up on White Sox Twitter yet? They they get pretty gnarly on there. Be careful. They might come at you first. Yeah, surface. two Twitter fan bases that you wouldn't really? expect it, but Padres, and I think Phil just ran into that a little bit, and, and he was complimenting yeah. them. He's com- he was complimenting them. He still ran into it. The Padres and uh, – no, the White Sox are good, Jake, but, but they're active if they want to be yeah. mad at you. They'll turn yeah, on you. Yeah, siders right? baby, right? Yeah. Padres fans are the – Weirdest. I've heard that. Phil Twitter. has mentioned that to me too. Padres Twitter is a thing, and he's like, yeah. hey, "It's dude. He's, it's like, he's, why are you guys so angry all the time? I don't get it." There's a lot yeah. of nice people from Padres that, but yeah, the I think like Reddit like talked about them too. Like they're like, "Yeah, it's pretty weird. <laughs> we don't get it." That's really funny. Tingler got, will straighten him out. Oh, Jace. I, I know Jace. Yeah, gonna be the good manager. Oh, yeah. I don't know. He was like a, a guy <laughs> in Texas when I was there in spring training. Nice guy. I like him. Quality control like coach. Him. It's the new it's a new position they're just making up and giving to people. I know. I need to get me a quality control gig. I think that's I've perfect. I could just like complain about things that aren't right. If you want that title, yeah. you got it, dude. Yeah, it's uh, it's up for grabs. <laughs> that's right yours. Now. Can I do quality control talking baseball? Like that's yeah. that should be my title. There you Done. go. Congratulations. <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> we're off the I, rails now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. One more. This is not spring training, but the, okay. the guy on uh, Twitter, Astros fan, did a huge amount of research mm-hmm. about when oh, they yes, used the yes, banging yes. and when they didn't. And oh, you were on the A's in 2017. So it changes a little bit because Phil Hughes quote tweeted it talking about Phil a ton today yeah. and said like, oh, guess who pitched in this game? It was a twins game that Barrio mm-hmm. started. Yep. I is saw that, that game. Does that like infuriate you even more to actually like when, now that we can pinpoint and like I retweeted it because there's one guy. Um, this is, you know, on August 4th, the game with the most trash can bangs, the Astros scored 16 earned runs. Mike Bolsinger, a Blue Jays reliever, allowed four earned runs in 0.1 innings pitched, and he never pitched in a big leagues again. And that's the type of shit Oof. that Freddie Freeman was getting Oof. emotional about. And players are trying to say there's consequences to this besides winning and losing games. So I mean, it's like, you know, it infuriates me to, like, actually have those examples. So as a player, I know you've been upset about this. Did this add anything or refuel it? Because, like, he was being like, that sucks. I think, I mean, it did and it didn't. I mean, I already was mad about the whole situation. So this kind of. This kind of like pinpointing it like that, yeah. I mean, you could really see like what guys were really affected by it. Um, I think we talked about it before the show how the the info is great and whoever did it like spent a lot of time doing it, but it's still skewed because he's like, this is the trash can bangs. Well, a no bang was also a sign. So like, yeah, you yeah. could take so, those numbers and they say, oh, he knew what pitch was coming forty percent of the time. Du- you, double it, double it. Yeah, you know, and. Um, I think what it did for me was I think Altuve and Bregman have been getting the brunt of everyone's like anger, and I don't really know why. I didn't know why. Now like you're seeing all these guys who are like obviously on the list, so it's kind of like opens your eyes. Like, dude, it's not just those two guys. I mean, they were like everyone. Damn, everyone was doing on that team. I I get hot Bregman. Over it. Riznik pisses me Riznick. off, man. His his yeah. only good hitting stats of his career are at home in 2017. <laughs> Otherwise, the dude is a is a center. He's a great defensive player, but he's yeah. a he'd have like a 600 flat OPS if you take out that yeah, segment. That's not good. And guess what? You can find dudes in the minor league that can catch balls in center field that can hit at a 600 OPS clip. Yes, the can. Mets just traded for him. I'm sure he'll be great this year. <laughs> that's it's. That's what we're talking about, man. I mean, that's any up. form of cheating, it's like you're you're taking jobs away from guys that are playing it straight, and that's that's upsetting. Um, but yeah, it's it's a couple guys got paid after that year, man. Like going to spring. Mar- going to, Marwin did. I know. He he had the most. I know. According to that, that one's that one's the tough one. I mean, I'm gonna be working a little bit with them, so I it's gonna be interesting to see. 
you know, he's going to get questioned a lot this year by the media yeah. and rightfully so. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how he handles it. And I mean, Minnesota is not exactly like a cutthroat media market, but you might you know, be that guy. You Should might I be, be the, the guy? Minnesota dude, yeah. You know I'm not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. All I right. just want everyone to be happy. Jake, yeah. we got anything else? I think the last question was, and this is kind of the end, anyways. Like, are cut days brutal in spring training? Or by the by the time they come, like you said, everything's you can kind of read the tea leaves and everything's been decided. What's the most brutal cut day you've seen? A guy that just cried like a baby. <laughs> name him. Name him. Uh, name him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just be cool about it. Uh, I will give you. I don't want to give a bad one. I want to give you cool, happy okay. cut day stories. Okay. You like that? So, you, when you go into spring training, there are times. Hold on one second. I have an intruder in here. I don't know if you guys can hear this. He's. I heard, hey, I heard a little rattling. Hey, can but you uh, can you go close that door for me, buddy, and stop rifling through my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's the best. Um, so good, st- good story. These are fun stories. That's what we want, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, you go into spring training. You know you're going to get cut eventually. You're like my first couple of years. You're just there. It's a token invite. It's great. In Fort Myers, uh, you know, around the cut time, it was always spring break. So you get these spring breakers down on Fort Myers Beach, and we knew. We all would just hope that we get cut on the same day, and usually you would. You know, like your boys. And you knew, like, they would tell you, they'd call you in the office at 8.30 in the morning, and they'd be like, hey, like, we're sending you down. Like, great job. You really showed us a lot. We're looking forward to you, you know, being on the team this year at some point. And you say, like, okay, sweet, da 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 And as soon as you got out that door, you knew you didn't have to, like, do anything that day. It was like, boom, straight to the Lonnie Kai, which is a bar in mm. Fort Myers Beach, shout out. Um, and it was just like you went and – Got to be a college spring dra- spring breaker for a day, and it was it, that was there was probably like three years I think that happened for me, and it was like each time it's like we just knew we already knew that it was coming. So it's the, um, it's a great day. It's like uh, you're hoping that they cut me today, cut me today, cut me today. I'm trying to get down to the Lonnie Kai. There's a booty shaking contest at four. You know, I gotta I gotta check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that the that's, that's the real stories. That is a good spin. All right, Jake, yeah. you got anything else? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I had this this turned into us interrogating Trev a little bit, but again, I mean that's uh, I, I think this was this was a little bit of baseball porn. Spring training has this. Yes, it's coming. It, like, yeah, like it's coming. And where we started at, if you're a baseball fan, spring training is everything. It's that intimate vibe. It's just it's back. Um, Everyone's so happy. <laughs> like, Everyone's yeah. happy. If you're it's mad or upset positive. at spring training, you suck as a person. That's a you thing. It's true. Uh, and I think I've made up my mind. I think I'm going to have to come out to Florida and just run yeah. around with you guys a little bit. Perfect. We'll, uh, we'll make a day out of it. I'm excited for that now. Whatever you want to do, big Perfect. guy. Oh, there we go. See you guys later. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Know,